welcome to aetcm the emergency medicine channel today we will be having an interesting case discussion discussion case details will be given by dr manna over to you manna thank you sir a 35 year old male patient was rolled into a in a into a ready in a trolley uh, in an unresponsive state uh, on examination patient was not responding uh, there was no spontaneous breathing so immediately our carotid pulse was checked that the uh, central pulse was absent so immediately i assigned one uh, person to take care of the uh, cpr chest compression and other person to be on the uh, uh, um, head end to uh, give uh, ambu in a ratio of 30s to 2 30 compressions and 2 breaths. Then third person was assigned to take an arterial blood gas analysis and secure IV cannula. And fourth person was assigned to um, load injection uh, adrenaline 1mg. And uh, other person was uh, document uh, assigned to connect the cardiac monitor. And uh, one person was assigned for documentation. Uh, and chest compressions were um, started simultaneously and uh, breaths were given. Uh, uh, then injection uh, adrenaline 1mg uh, was loaded followed by 10 ml NS flush uh, 1 is 2000 dilution followed by one, uh, 10 ml NS flush and uh, after connecting the cardiac monitor we uh, checked for the rhythm rhythm was showing uh, organized rhythm was shown uh, that time we um, rechecked the carotid pulse carotid pulse was present so um, uh, ROS was attained then we went into airway detailed airway breathing circulation po uh, post resuscitation so in the air just, uh, just one second so this patient was brought in an unresponsive state. state okay so we don't know any history or anything so when you get such a patient uh, uh, what will be the ideal thing you go ahead you are done with your bls protocol but whenever you suspect you want to protect the cervical spine yes sir yes sir you want to protect the cervical spine when you don't get a clear cut history or whether he had a fall and he was brought in whether it is always taken into consideration that he has a cervical spine injury even if it is not a trauma case it is better to go ahead and know that it is a trauma case unless and until we are clearly stating somebody stating that he was seen responding and suddenly he was in the ambulance he collapsed inside the ambulance mm -hmm. rather than in this scenario especially in this case in what we are going to deal we will come to that but definitely when you don't have a clue it is better to think that the patient is having a cervical spine injury and the initial primary uh, assessment and primary survey itself it is better to say that you have protected the cervical spine either with manual inline stabilization or uh, with the uh, uh, Philadelphia okay. color. Yeah. So that will be the correct thing. So how was the uh, time for CPR? Total one cycle of adrenaline, one dose of adrenaline, adrenaline was, was given. given. So that means he had approximately within two to three Two minutes, minutes the yeah. ROC was, was achieved. achieved. So so ROC was achieved. So once you achieve the ROC, uh, what all things you can proceed? Uh, immediately after achieving ROC, we uh, went ahead. Uh, we went to post cardiac arrest management. In the airway, there was pooling of secretions, and uh, in the neck there was a um, ligature mark visible. So immediately we secured the um, cervical spine with a C collar was placed after applying the posterior part of the c-collar we checked for the any laryngeal crepitus or there was any subcutaneous emphysema or anything or laryngeal fractures uh, which was absent and uh, c-collar anterior part of the c-collar was placed and uh, um, for pooling of secretion uh, we done uh, simultaneously we done a um, suctioning also uh, then the breathing patient was gasping so we thought of uh, a definitive airway uh, since IV cannula was already placed IV fluids were rushed in and uh, we um, secured the airway with inline uh, stabilization of the c-spine uh, okay so, so for example this patient uh, uh, you said regarding the carpitus and all so can you elaborate why you want to check that if you make anything to add on you can just ask Mana, still more details about ligature mark was okay. it complete was it partial uh, in this patient, the, uh, we could only visualize the anterior part of the ligature mark which was, it, which was above the hyoid bone and posterior part ligature mark was not seen. Uh, after seeing that we uh, did the inline stabilization that time itself, uh, the, uh, not was not visible in this patient. Um, so uh, actually uh, we should look for in case, uh, so we are suspecting a hanging in this patient. So in such patients we should look for an uh, airway compromise can be there and there can be compression over the trachea and tracheal fracture injuries can be there. Um, so, uh, so we should look for the subcutaneous emphysema because of the air leak, because of the fracture, uh, so which was absent for this patient. Uh, then the ligature uh, mark was there. Supposedly there is uh, subcutaneous emphysema. Uh -huh. So how will you decide further? Uh, 
uh, subcutaneous emphysema then the uh, maintaining the airway will be difficult sir mm. so uh, same, when we are planning for a definitive airway we should uh, uh, do a plan for a fibro optic intubation uh, or at least a video laryngoscopic intubation then uh, we should also call the head and neck team or we should plan for a um, surgical, 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 surgical airway, airway. Okay. anything to add on this? mana if you are seeing with some patterns of struggle like finger prints near throat what will you suspect in that case we should suspect a um, this a uh, homicide attempt uh, homicide usually in throatling okay. it will be seen if that ligature mark or the patternish pattern can you use mo- mo- go more details on it for example if it is a shawl or it is, it is a rope can you give details of it yes Uh, ligature marks um, in this patient um, when this patient presented itself uh, um, there was a ligature mark which was seen we should we, we didn't know what was the ligating substance um, so i- if it is a rope and all it will be a, a more thin structure as compared to a shawl so the ligature will be more compressing and the ligature mark will be very prominent in that case and it will be uh, pattern. Pattern, pattern okay if, pattern if it is a rope or it is a wire it will produce some pattern okay. and force will be direct force if it is a shawl means that force will be spread out and underlying vascular injury will be less prominent when compared to other structures okay continue then uh, so immediately uh, airway was secured with a, a 7 point size uh, et tube uh, okay. under uh, uh, actually uh, since there was no laryngeal crepitus and all uh, we could do a normal, normal intubation normal. Uh, and angle of mouth was uh, kept 20 and uh, we connected her to the ventilator then you want to give any drugs while intubating for this patient you have intubated after your uh, uh-huh. roc has achieved so uh, you want to do it as a crash airway or you want to go ahead uh, and uh, maybe like an rsi you want to go ahead what will be the ideal thing um, actually uh, this was immediately after the cardiac arrest mm-hmm. so a crash airway was done and the patient uh, sensorium was not attained she was gasping in that time so okay, sensorium we is not there still you are suspecting pain. a raised pain. icp pain. so uh, whether you want to maybe not an rsi not a crash airway something in between there's actually no terminology what we can call exactly rsi you have to follow by step by step but certain scenario you have already achieved the roc you are not intubated during your cardiac arrest if you are intubating during cardiac arrest definitely it will become a crash airway now this patient is gasping for breath you are able to maintain her airway maybe you can think of giving some drugs maybe exactly not rsi but definitely you can give some uh, sedative agents uh, some uh, analgesics mm. definitely like a rsi we can go that that will be an ideal scenario because why already the patient is taking breath when you again not uh, giving any drugs and intubating that will again raise the icp so that is not ideal okay uh, in the circulation already airway breathing is secured sir so in the circulation heart rate was 120 per minute with a blood pressure of um, 80 by 40 and map of uh, 53 uh, or so uh, as a part of post cardiac arrest management cold saline was started and um, noradrenaline infusion was started sir uh, then why noradrenaline uh actually uh, why now adrenaline you preferred all in this patient um heart rate is 140 mm-hmm. and uh, associated with uh, hypotension was there so, so we, uh, did you give the fluid challenge already uh, fluids are going on sir fluids no, fluid uh, fluid uh, when you will start yes uh, what what will you before starting inotropes what will be the first step fluid challenge sir fluid, fluid challenge. how much we gave for this patient at uh, this patient during the intubation we have given almost 1 liter of fluids 1 liter of fluid what is the uh, bp before intubating and after intubation was uh, she responsive to our fluids or not actually this patient was responsive sir uh, we just started as a part of uh, post cardiac arrest management only we started noradrenaline infusion uh, you want to start noradrenaline for post cardiac arrest no uh, no so ideally it was not required see whenever uh, definitely you need to prevent hypotension there is no question in in that but when you have uh, a drug which we have already given your fluids and the blood pressure has improved uh, maybe you could have waited maybe yeah. 90 by 50 or 100 by 60 that might be the baseline that bp for the, the baseline bp you are having a good map of around 65 mm-hmm. that is acceptable uh, when you can start noradrenaline i am not saying that you should not start noradrenaline or even adrenaline or dopamine whatever be the drugs but the point here is that uh, you have to make sure that when whether it is really indicated or not maybe for even if you have anticipated hypotension you would have started again noradrenaline uh, adrenaline you start increase the heart rate noradrenaline will not increase the heart rate that is one added advantage definitely you can start i am not saying but 
make sure that you are using your first line agents then you go ahead like fluids then you go ahead and uh, uh, give your further drugs okay uh, dis disability at present her gcs is e1 vt m1 uh, gr base was 190 and pupils were 3 mm reactive sir. Um, exposure temperature was um, 36 degrees celsius and uh, we, uh, at this point of time we are planning for targeted temperature management so already cold saline is going on and uh, to keep a targeted temperature between 30 to 36 degrees celsius uh, we are giving uh, cold ice packs uh, in the axilla and these things how how which is the best one to do the ttm uh, you have different approaches you have started on cold saline you have started on ice pack how much uh, useful all these things are how much useful these things are? Uh, temp uh, what uh, are the different uh, okay. There are two types of cooling techniques. One is external cooling okay. and internal, internal cooling. cooling. Internal cooling is what we are using. What these things, uh, IV, saline and some people are giving bladder wash. These are internal cooling techniques. External cooling techniques are this axillary packs, groin packs and keeping uh, saline soaked gases over hmm. throats. Usual best thing is combination of both. But what we are following is only internal cooling. Internal cooling is as okay. equally good as the other thing. Maybe you can okay. have the bear hair girls. Bear. You can have the external warming blankets okay. or external cooling blankets are available where you can set the core temperature. So that will be the ideal thing. When you wanted to have a real targeted temperature manager, there are structures available. Maybe in the ICU to prevent hypothermia, we are using. To prevent hypothermia, we are using it. And you can even you can set a temperature of 34 degree in that. Okay. So definitely you can use these devices. And there are in the market active uh, post cardiac arrest uh, TTM uh, devices are available which is I think it is very expensive to be used in our in Indian scenarios but it is available. So the ideal would be an external warming technique where you can make the control of the core body temperature and get into somewhere between 34 degrees Celsius. So that is a priority. Why you want to get a TTM? Why, what is the idea of doing a TTM? Uh, neurological. Especially in this patient, definitely a TTM is one of the major indication because she had a cardiac arrest and she had a primary neuro insult also. So in order to prevent, have a better outcome, definitely temperature, uh, targeted temperature management has to be done. Okay. Yeah. So um, as a part of post cardiac arrest management, we asked for a 12D DCG. ECG was showing a sinus tachycardia. Um, then uh, already, uh, then uh, at that time the arterial blood gas analysis report came, uh, which was taken during the cardiac arrest. Okay. That time the pH was 6.697, uh, PCO2 of 107, bicarbonate of 11.7, PO2 of 24.2, um, with a lactate of 22. Okay. What is your ABG interpretation? ABG, uh, there is both respiratory and lactic acid, high anion gap acidosis and um, lactic acidosis sir. Okay. Maybe, maybe because of the airway compromise she went for a respiratory acidosis, PCO2 retention respiratory acidosis and uh, with the uh, uh, with the circulatory defect uh, lactic acidosis. Maybe she had gone for a seizure also. Okay. She had a cardiac arrest also. Cardiac arrest. So she was not breathing. Uh -huh. So that would be the primary I reason. Okay. Then uh, we uh, reassess the patient. Reassessment: uh, her heart rate was 100 per minute. Uh, respiratory rate was almost 18 in on the ventilator, and her uh, blood pressure was uh, 11070 with an noradrenaline. We are able to uh, taper the noradrenaline to 5 ml per hour, and saturation was uh, 100 percentage with a uh, uh, FiO2 50 percentage, and we are able to taper the FiO2 requirement also on the ventilator. Okay. Can you just uh, brief regarding the ventilator settings? Okay, ma'am. Uh, Regarding ventilator, what is what is the pressure which we have kept and what is the pressure which patient is uh, tidal volume which patient is getting? Uh, pressures um, actually this patient minimal pressures were pressure control uh, pressures were fifteen pressures were kept and peep of five. With that patient was uh, getting a tidal volume of almost four hundred sir. So four hundred. You started with a pressure control okay. ventilation. Yes, so you have to be very really specific uh, in your answering. You started on a pressure control okay. ventilation with a targeted tidal volume of around 6, 6 to 8, 8 ml, ml per kg. kg. So for that reason, you started around 15 uh, pressures you initiated. And what will be the FAO2 and PEEP that you have set in? What is the what FAO2? Is the FAO2? What is the PEEP? Uh, initially, uh, just after intubation, we kept the FAO2 as 100. Okay. Then, uh, but and patient was maintaining a saturation of 100. Also. So we are able to actually titrate the FAO2 uh, to maintain the saturation more than 95. What is okay, the what is the target CO2? What is the initial CO2 which we got? Initial PCO2 was 107. Uh, 
um, so uh, we need to target the PCO2 between 35 to 45. Sir. Okay. To, for neurological protection. Sir. Okay. So you intubated this patient, you said you were able to bring down on the FIO2 for this patient and after 3 hours the patient is in the emergency room and suddenly the sister is coming and telling you that the patient is desaturated. Mm -hmm. So what are the things that you will keep in your mind? Uh, desaturation. desaturation for a ventilated patient. This is my question. Uh, we should l check for the um, displacement of the tube. Okay. Uh, we should uh, check for any obstruction. Mm. Should uh, look for pneumothorax. Um, this patient, pneumothorax can be there because of the tracheal injury. Okay. Pneumothorax so, dope is equipment. negative. Dope is negative. Uh, then uh, we need uh, this patient had a hang in the, there can be a aspiration also aspiration and uh, any foreign body obstruction can be there okay then uh, we should uh, anticipate a, uh, a respiratory arrest uh, respiratory uh, which is unlikely this patient should have respiratory then uh, neurogenic pulmonary edema should be considered okay so we can have a pulmonary edema so uh, so we have to when you dope is negative we have to go ahead you would have auscultated already you mm -hmm. have auscultated you can look for the graphs in the ventilator mm -hmm. what is the graphical representation what is the pressures that is uh, coming up the pressure alarms are going up this will be the early indication whether there is any airway obstruction if there is no airway obstruction then you can auscultate for the base of the skull base of the lungs exactly. or you can use your ultrasound machine and look for Slides. Sliding, lung sliding. Lung sliding and pulmonary When you suspect pulmonary look B for the B lines. Look for the B lines. So you have a B lines. You have uh, maybe high pressure limits that is coming up in the ventilator. That means the patient is going for a pulmonary So here the reason for pulmonary it will be a possibly a neurogenic pulmonary So what is a neurogenic pulmonary Neurogenic pulmonary edema usually uh, because of the brain atriuretic peptides. Uh, it uh, usually occurs in case of uh, IC bleeds or uh, in case of seizure or any um, um, vascular compromise. Any uh, raised ICP. Raised ICP. Uh, what happens is um, exact cause is not known, but in the body there can be sudden, sudden sympathetic cutoff and there can be uh, even uh, um, increased uh, hydrothoracic pressure will be there. Hi hydrostatic pressure will be high and systemic vasoconstriction will be there. That will cause increased uh, uh, venous return and uh, um, uh, cardiac overload will be there which will cause a pulmonary edema okay so how will you manage okay uh, management is um, same as of the pulmonary edema uh, we will be uh, increasing the uh, positive pressure ventilation increase the uh, pressure sir uh, ingre, uh, increase the peep okay okay so what does the peep increases what does it help how does it help when you increase the peep Increase a positive pressure will be given. We will uh, we can peep and peep, peep peep peep. I'm peep. asking about peep. peep. Uh, and expiratory pressure will be given. Okay. That will prevent the airway collapse uh, the, because all alveolar, 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 alveolar collapse already in the alveoli. Uh, there will be flu alveolar uh, uh, pulmonary edema fluid. See, just okay, okay. You can explain in it. in uh, what exact peep is going to do is in pulmonary edema fluid is there in alveoli, alveoli. which is preventing it to collapse. collapse. Okay, now we are giving more pressure to keep the collapsed alveoli open for nor more than normal time than usual. So, alveoli will get expanded so that there will be time for exchange of oxygen so that saturation will pick up. That is what happening. Okay. okay. So, the patient is on ventilator. Uh, you have started the target temperature management and uh, whatever we have discussed, fine. Now, what are the uh, major uh, medical legal responsibility of an emergency physician? whether you need to intimate to the police regarding this case or what are the documentation that you need to make regarding a suspected hanging. Can you just explain or yes. you can add on with it? Yes, sir, while taking the history, um, taking the history and examination part, um, uh, we should uh, take care of that very properly and that means uh, if a patient is coming with the ligature mark on the body uh, we should not cut uh, open that ligature that knot should not be opened and if we are if at all we are cutting the um, ligature we should cut it far away from the knot uh, then uh, depending on the position of the knot if it is above we should check if it is above the hyoid bone or below the hyoid bone usually it will be above the hyoid bone in case of a uh, suicide attempt or hanging uh, and while taking the history also we should take whether it was a complete hanging or a partial hanging. Complete hanging means the uh, patient's body is not touching the ground, patient's entire weight is suspended uh, and the pressure is given to the neck and partial hanging means body is, uh, um, some part of the body is touching, touching the floor. Or any or other object, object, it can be the bed also. Okay. Okay. Uh, 
uh, then uh, uh, we should uh, examine for the um, uh, position of the knot and uh, knot position also we, uh, we, we are classifying as typical and atypical. Typical hanging means the knot will be posterior and atypical means uh, in any of the sides. If at all uh, yeah, and in that also there is um, suicidal uh, sorry um, uh, anti-mortem and post-mortem hanging is there. If at all you are suspecting an anti-mortem hanging there will be features of la, uh, la facie sympathetic that means on the side of the knot the eyes will be open and um, uh, pooling of saliva. Will, um, so these are all uh, theoretical things that uh, huh? whatever be the textbooks what we classically see as a primary responsibility of an emergency mission our patient care is the first that definitely need not wait for all this forensic aspect you do the patient care and uh, possible uh, documentation yes. regarding the ligature mark Marks. everything you document maybe a picture of mm -hmm. representation of the same so that whenever the police comes and they can clearly see what is happening mm -hmm. and all those things and when you have a forensic medicine team you can involve them better mm -hmm. because as a clinician it is always uh, our priority will be patient care but uh, definitely we will not be missing this forensic aspect also but all those things are theoretically set well set but uh, definitely it may not be true for all the cases yes, so that is the thing that you need to keep in your mind. And uh, can you just elaborate uh, why uh, there is a death uh, in hanging? What will be the reason? There are different types of hanging as we say. You can have uh, a suicidal attempt, you can have judicial hanging. So what will be the differences and what all things that you need to do in this, both these similar cases? Uh, in case of judicial hanging, judicial hanging usually the knot will be posterior uh, and, and that is typical hanging. In such cases, uh, mostly the uh, C-spine injury will be the cause, um, cord injury will be the cause of death and in case of um, uh, any other knot uh, kept in any other position. Okay. Uh, in judicial hanging, this uh, odontoid process of axis will be. impinging over cervical cord and that will be the reason for death. death. You continue with other types of hanging. Uh, other types of hanging, airway compromise and the venous compression will be, uh, congestion will be the cause of death, sir. Yes. So, uh, in other types of hanging, what exactly happening? There is an airway, airway compromise, compromise initially. Airway compromise resulting compression. Then further the blood vasculature will start getting compressed. Maybe later on, initially venous stasis followed by carotid, 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 carotid injury and carotid compression. Then death will happen. So, and the other one, the death will be immediate, okay. more of an immediate. immediate. So, usually in suicidal hanging, the reason for death is due to the airway, airway compromise. compromise. So, uh, as in this case, uh, uh, you could uh, resuscitate her, uh, resuscitate the patient as if uh, because it was only maybe a partial hanging, mm -hmm. we don't know exactly what happened and she has come with a very bad PH to the emergency room. Okay, now uh, after uh, what all things, how it was proceeded, post cardiac arrest care? Um, uh, uh, repeat, um, uh, vital have told, then we, I went ahead with the sample history. Ah, before sample history, anything in adjuncts to perimeter which we missed? Was the patient catheterized? We have given fluid, patient is in hypotension. Uh -huh. Was the patient having normal urine output? Uh, patient was catheterized. Okay. If it is a female patient, again you have to do an UPT test. That is the other important thing. Okay. Sample history. Yes, sample sample history. history. There was no allergy. Patients not on any uh, medication. Um, uh, no other past histories. Last meal was seven seven hours back. Uh, patient was found hanging uh, in the room uh, in the fan uh, uh, and the ligature. Uh, patient used the shawl for uh, hanging um, and uh, it was a complete hanging. Um, so when the bystanders saw this, patient was immediately rushed Brought to the emergency, emergency room. room. That was the history. Uh, then uh, there was no. Uh, what was the uh, outcome of the patient? In this patient outcome was very good, sir. Our uh, patient, uh, we were able to discharge after 20 days. Sir. 20 days of after that, she was discharged. Okay. Now, uh, the same patient had come to the emergency room. The, whether you need to give any antibiotics, that is the next question. Role of steroids, antibiotics. What are the other drugs management that you need to give? Okay. Um, regarding antibiotics, sir, um, there can be a hist um, there can be a risk of aspiration due even during the mm. intubation or uh, while transportation there can be a risk of aspiration. So uh, uh, for uh, antibiotics should be given. Then um, uh, C scholar should be sta um, uh, stabilized. stabilized. Mm -hmm. uh, Foley catheterization should be done. Then we should take for a CTC spine uh, should be done immediately um, to check for any fractures. Usually hangman fracture is the one expected or the fracture for dendrite Okay, process. there is no C spine is normal, yeah. uh, but still the patient is having deficits. Um, there can be skew. Uh, 
antiepileptics uh, it um, in this patient already hanging has happened and there is some air, uh, hypoxia was already there so if at all this patient develops a seizure that will again cause hypoxia and further brain injury so to prevent uh, that we can start on a antiepileptic okay, okay. when you have uh, witnessed one definitely yes definitely yes and again to start antiepileptic it's a big question okay. because why you want to start an antiepileptic that's all depends upon the clinician's decision so whether upon your experience and you feel that this patient needs and you definitely you can start but as of now when you see blindly you need not start but definitely when for this patient there is a high chance of uh, uh, seizure so definitely you can uh, think of starting an anti seizure medication then for the okay what is the repeat blood gas for this patient repeat blood gas uh, which was taken after 3 hours was showing a ph of um, 7.15 Uh, with a PCO2 of um, 40 and a bicarbonate of um, 18, sir. And uh, PO2 was uh, 99. Lactate value in? Lactate value initially was 22. Then after that, lactate uh, was 18, sir. It is improving? Improving, sir. Okay. Then, uh, in... Oh. Hey, Kalyan. So, anything to add on, Vivek? Anything? Anything else? Yes. You feel... It's Fine. So we had a young male who had come to the emergency room with an alleged history of uh, possible hanging and he was brought in an unresponsive state. So uh, immediately the CPR was started and the ROC was achieved after uh, maybe after 5 cycles of CPR of a dose of adrenaline and uh, then you start on with your post cardiac arrest care and uh, he was intubated, ventilated and he was kept in the ICU and he recovered. So yes. that is the final history. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Good presentation. Thank you.